السلام عليكم ما شاء الله بسم الله الحمد لله وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد ومن ولا We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send peace and blessings upon our beloved messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam upon his family, his companions and those who follow them until the end of time It's really wonderful to almost see all of you with these bright lights but alhamdulillah the DMV is representing, mashallah, representing well. Uh, I've been asked to talk about the Ghurubat, and many of us know this narration of Imam Muslim on behalf of our beloved Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who used a very nice word, Tuba. And those from Senegal, you have Medina Tuba, the city of Tuba. But the word Tuba that the Prophet used means paradise and the structure of the hadith is that the prophet is promising like i promise that's why there's different narrations where he actually says the word three times i promise tuba 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 lil ghurubat i promise paradise for those who are strange this narration in muslim is completed further by the narration found in Imam Ahmed's Musnad where the Prophet said when he was asked by the Sahaba who are those people because the word Ghuraba is strange so it's fitting that its meaning is the strangers so they ask him alayhi salatu wassalam and here we learn something for religious educators and imams and shuk that asking questions is important. We should not discourage people from asking questions. And when people ask you questions, don't let shaitan make you think they're trying to challenge you. The opposite. They ask you questions because they trust you. Subhanallah. And that's a very important honor. And that's why the Prophet Sallallahu said, Inna ma shafi'a, that indeed the remedy, shifa'ul'i, the remedy for any illness is to ask a question. I have four children. Every time they ask me a question, shaitan comes to me and says, you know, don't respect you. They're trying to challenge you. So one time I asked my, my 21 year old, may Allah make it easy for me. So why do you ask me so many questions? She said, because I trust you. SubhanAllah. So it's important as parents, as educators, that we welcome the power of questions. So they asked the Prophet ﷺ, who are the ghuraba? Who are the strange ones? And the Prophet said, the people who the people the people who reform when others are corrupting what I want to talk about briefly are the different areas of reform but more importantly what are the conditions to be in that position a position of the ghuraba because it's not an emotional thing. And oftentimes the TikTok ox, they push high intensity interpretations. And sometimes folks on Facebook may push the opposite. This is not the place for that. There are clear interpretive measures that will allow us to step into being the ghuraba, those people that the promise of the Prophet for Jannah was extended to. The first is al-islah, reform. And a Muslim is not someone who should be satisfied with being salih fi nafsihi, fi nafsiha, that he or she is satisfied with being upright within his or herself. 
but also they should be muslih li ghayrihima. They should not only be reformed internally, but they should also work to reform others. The best analogy I can give you is water in fiqh. Every type of water is not acceptable for worship. The only type of washa, water which is permissible for worship is tahir mutahir. It's pure, but it's purifying. So the Muslim is someone who's salih, muslih, tahir, mutahir. That's why some of our teachers used to say that the condition to be a da'ya, that the condition to be a teacher, that the condition to be someone who's guiding the Muslims. And for our wonderful sister who's signing, let's give her a big round of applause, alhamdulillah. And no, you're supposed to do like this. You don't know that. You're supposed to do like this, right? Yeah, that's what it, that's how you do it. I'm going to make sure everything I say in Arabic, I will say it in English for you. So we don't get lost. So forgive me. But the Muslim who wants to be involved in Islamic work should think about the water that is acceptable for worship. The water that's acceptable for worship has two qualities. It's pure in itself and it's purifying for others. The Muslim who wants to rectify the state of, the, of humanity and the ummah should first be rectified in their own lives as best they can and then think about rectifying others. Tahir mutahir, salih muslih. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, in the context of our relationships with one another, He says, Rectify the affairs amongst yourselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wattaqullaha, that you should fear Allah, wa aslihu dhata baynikum, and rectify the affairs amongst yourselves. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Yuslih lakum a'malakum, the same word, islah, that Allah, if you're sincere and a person of obedience, will bring your actions into balance, will reform your actions for you. The ghuruba. There are so many different areas we can talk about the strangers. We could talk about them in the context of worship. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the Prophet, tabatila. Those people who find that time to be alone with Allah, particularly in night and particularly with voluntary fasting. We could talk about being the ghuruba in those who call to Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, invite people to good. Allah says, who is better in speech than the one who calls to Allah and does good? Salih, Muslih, as I said earlier, they practice what they preach. But in the short time I have left, I want to share with you a beautiful narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that touches on the understandings and the approaches that we should have as Muslims to our faith and the life that we live. As Sheikh Taha Jabir used to say to us that the Muslim is someone who reads Ayatul Quran and Ayatul Akwan. They read the verses of the Quran, but they also read the signs of the world around them. How can we be people of impact? And how can we be people who bring good to the world around us? It starts with how we think. And the Prophet, peace be upon him, noted the strangers as being the people of knowledge. Historically, the people of knowledge have been opposed by the broader Muslim community through history because the people of knowledge are balanced. You look at any of the great ulama that you know today, many of them like Imam al-Tabari, his burial happened in secret. He wasn't as famous maybe as he is now. Imam Abu Hanifa, he suffered. Imam Malik, he suffered. Imam Ibn Rushd, he, he died in house arrest. Great luminaries of Islam that you know now were initially opposed by the masses because the job of the scholars is to maintain balance. Allah <laughs> mizan, As the Quran says, 
وكذلك جعلناكم أمة وسطا لتكونوا شهداء على الناس You are the moderate balanced community so you can be a witness a condition of da'wah is i'tidal wa tawassut to be balanced look at the great arabist an-nahas imam an-nahas was sitting on the nile river and he began to recite arabic poetry that he had written to encapsulate all of the rules of the arabic language and some people passed behind him and they threw him in the nile and they killed him and they said this guy he's casting spells he was reading grammar Imam Ibn Nahwi, the great, great scholar of Islam from the 7th century, when he went into a masjid to teach, he was thrown out of the masjid by the masses. They said, That guy is teaching us something we don't know. So it's important to understand that the role of scholarship is not a comfortable position. It's not about likes. Because if you measure yourself in Instagrams, you're going to have no value. If you feel like you're wasting time and you're always tick, tock, the answer's in the, in the app you're using. And if you're always arguing because you're on Discord, it's called Discord. As ulama, as mashaykh, you can't worry about what the people want. You have to worry about Allah commands. And Allah commands us to stay balanced. In this hadith, I'll finish. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam says, very beautifully, very beautifully, يَحْمِلُ هَذَا الْعِلْمِ That the people who will carry this knowledge, the knowledge of the religion, and this hadith is a sahih hadith, that the people who carry the knowledge of the religion, مِنْ كُلِّ خَلَفٍ عُدُولُهُ From generation to generation, and generation and generation, and generation and generation, will be the udul, sigha mubalagha. It's a, it's a form of embellishment. The super balanced, the super unique in their balance. And then the Prophet describes their job. And this is the type of Islamic thought we want to look for and to draw near to, the opposite of what the Prophet is about to say. Number one, he says that they forbid the tahrif anhu al jahili. The interpretation from the word harf. You know the word harf? It doesn't mean min, ila, fi, an. The word harf means an edge. So the job of the scholars is to protect people from the periphery interpretations that will lead them either to irresponsible liberalism or irrational conservatism. In the middle is the job of Islamic thought and scholars and teachers. What you should be looking for in your education. Not in hiraf, not on the edge, but in the center. The second he said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and on the intihal of the mubatilin, the lies. And we know that there are constantly people injecting lies, especially about our historical tradition, about the role of Muslims now. We're constantly lied about. We have to protect each other from that. And the third thing he said, wa ta'wilu al The word ta'wil is from the same word as awwal. Awwal means the first. Allah, one of his names, who al awwal wal akhir, the first and the last. And especially for those of you, sometimes I talk to young Muslims who feel traumatized, especially young women and young men who feel traumatized when they are exposed to some of the crazy stuff they see online. This is ta'wil al Ta'wil means that the first thought that comes to mind, the person just accepts it. There's no self-criticism. So whatever thought comes to mind to me first, based on what I want, based on my emotional and psychological state, Quran. I will interpret the Quran based on that. That's ta'wil al mavmum It's forbidden to do that. But the job of the ulama is to protect people from that kind of ta'wil. So the ghuraba, the strangers, are not those who go hyper-conservative or those who go weird or those who go super liberal, those who wear hemp-based thobes. The ghuraba are those in the middle who hold the ummah, the vital center. And that starts with our teachers and our education. That does what the Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Number one, it protects us from the the periphery of the ignorant people. 
Number two, it protects us from the lies of the Islamophobes and others. And number three, it protects us from the irresponsible, irrational, cathartic opinions of those who are insecure and extreme in their thoughts, and they project that on the Ummah. May Allah give us tawfiq. Barakallahu feekum. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.